Well, good morning, everyone. Well, good morning, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Is the mic on? There we go. It is, my name is Mr. Garrish, Scott Garrish, and I'm the superintendent here at Greene County Tech, and it is a joy and my privilege to welcome you to our 51st annual Veterans Day Assembly, 51 programs. That's amazing. The faculty, staff, and students here at GCT and myself want to thank all our servicemen, their guests, and community members who have joined us today for this very special celebration. I would like to ask everyone to please stand at this time for the invocation, and I'll ask you to remain standing for the presentation of our nation's colors, the national anthem, and the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for this day to remember our veterans. I ask that you would please use this ceremony to honor them and their sacrifice. And thank you that because of them, we can meet here today. In Jesus' name, amen. of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. You may be seated. And again, welcome. And ladies and gentlemen, in tribute to the men and women who have served in each of the branches of our armed forces, the Green County Tech Band and Choir will perform the song related to that branch of service as JROTC will present the flag for each branch. We ask that veterans stand for their branch of service as the song is played and the flag that represents their branch of service is displayed. United States Army.
the United States Coast Guard. the United States Marines. The United States Air Force. the United States Navy. Thank you again to everyone who was able to stand today and through the many years that I have been around this program at Tech. That's my favorite part of the program. I thoroughly enjoy that. And thank you all who participated in that portion. At this time, we would like to recognize those veterans that have served their country during times of war. Would those of you who served during World War II please stand? And for all of those who have been able to stand in the past, let's please give them a round of applause. Would those of you who served during the Korean War please stand? Thank you. Would those of you who served during the Vietnam War please stand? Thank you. Would those of you who served during the Cold War era please stand? Thank you. 
Would those of you who served during the Persian Gulf War please stand? Thank you. Would those of you who served during Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan or Operation Iraqi Freedom please stand? Thank you all for your service. Let's give all of those people one more big round of applause. Thank you again. And finally, because we know that it is not just the men and women who serve in the military that sacrifice for their country and for freedom, it is also the loved ones left behind. They also bear a part of the burden. If any of you here today have a loved one who is now serving or who has served in the military ever, please stand. Thank you all very much. For spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountain majesties above the fruited plains, America, America, God shall. good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea oh beautiful for pilgrim feet where stern impassioned stress a thoroughfare of freedom beat across
That was an amazing performance. Thank you, ladies. One more round of applause. Very well done. Ladies and gentlemen, for the 13th presentation of the Gerald Freely Sr. and Gerald Freely Jr. Scholarship, please welcome Master Sergeant Scott Burlingame, Commander of the GCT JROTC program, Mr. David Freely, son of Gerald Freely Sr., and the Veterans Day Program Director, Mrs. Lori Dial. Has it really been 51 years, Miss Sullivan? It surely doesn't seem like it. It's always great to come home um, to enjoy this special time celebrating veterans and the service that they give. In each generation, a few have stepped forward. In each generation, a few have forged ahead into the unknown. In each generation, a few have put aside the easy life and accepted the hard work of protecting freedom, of holding high the light of liberty and freedom. Their sweat, their blood, their courage are sewn in the very fabric of a flag. When you honor it, you honor them and their sacrifice for us. They have given us a gift, the gift of freedom, and yet they have asked for no payment in return. And we could give none that would suffice. So one day was set aside for veterans, November the 11th. However, today is November the 10th. And if you're a Marine, please stand up. Happy birthday, 247. My brothers. Now, thank you. Now, some veterans they have a visible sign of their service. Missing limb, a scar. Some don't. Some carry them deep within. But what is a veteran? How would you know by walking down the street? Young students of Green County Tech You've noticed by looking out here that these look like normal people. They don't wear any emblems generally and unless they try to see if their old uniform still fits. But they generally they don't they don't uh, you won't see any emblems except for maybe in parades or on a day like today. You get to wear his BDUs or his camis. But their service, nonetheless, has been at great cost through blood and their brothers and something they carry with them for the rest of their lives. It's that freedom that they provided for those who've worked, those who have died, that you can play on your phone and do a TikTok video. They may be, though, and most likely, still serving the community after their service. Many veterans become police officers, firefighters, serve other veterans in some way, but they continue on, and they pay it forward. It was in this in mind that my mother and I began the Freely Family Scholarship. It wasn't anything about honoring our family or anything about our name. It was about paying it forward to give the opportunity to some Air Force ROTC graduate that they too can get on a path and head in the direction and also pay it forward. They have to have several, how you say, qualifications in order to get this position. Character traits of honor, courage, commitment, 
selflessness, service, integrity, dedication, and pride in this school, their family, their community, and of course, a love for country. So it is with great honor that I now come before you today to award the 13th year of the scholarship, the GTS High School Air Force Junior to see as named by the committee. Thank you all, and please help me congratulate the winner of this scholarship. It is my great honor to announce to you this year's winner of the Gerald R. Freely Junior and Senior Scholarship, Miss Macy Dawn Noel. Thank you once again to the Freely family, and congratulations, Macy. One more round of applause. Great job. And now we have a special dance presentation. Please welcome our senior high dance team. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Lori Dial. I'm the theater instructor, and I'm also the Veterans Day coordinator here at Greene County Tech. It is an honor and a privilege to hold those titles. I love being an Eagle. I love the fact that as an Eagle, we dedicate this day to our most precious gift, our veterans. Thank you so much for being here, and happy birthday, Marines. Each year, the English department hosts a patriotism writing contest to coincide with Veterans Day. And this year's winners are, as you got to see, I hope some of you got to see some of the quotes that our students have written. Uh, Miss Bain does a great job of preparing those. We had those scrolling before the program began. And uh, just want you to understand, our students do think about this more than just one day a year. Uh, it's a part of their lives and who they are. And so we're very proud of that. Our third place winner, and uh, if you can, just go ahead and stand and be recognized. Our third place winner this year was a poem written by 
Aubrey Schock, entitled Grandpa's Portrait. Our second place winner this year is a personal narrative essay written by Caitlin Hall. In her beautiful essay, she tells the story of what she learned about her great-grandfather, Sergeant Charles Hopper, who served in the Korean War. Thank you. Thank you for that. Our first place winner is a short story written by a senior, Miss Chloe Juno. Her creative fiction tells a very realistic and heart-wrenching story of a wife who sends her husband off to war. So congratulations, Chloe. The English department would like to commend all the participants in this year's contest. I think we had over 80 entries this year, so that's spectacular. Uh, for their eloquent and passionate expressions of patriotism, the committee was very much challenged to select winners among the group of quality submissions. Thank you very much. Everybody needs inspiration Everybody needs a song A beautiful melody When the nights are long Cause there is no guarantee Yeah. 
Try not to cry. <laughs> I am blessed with some amazingly talented students. Thank you so much for being here to witness some of their work today. They do a great job. One more round of applause for that last trio. It is an honor and a pleasure for me today to introduce to you our keynote guest speaker, um, celebrated author, and just a wonderful human being. I've gotten to uh, pass and repass with him at different Veterans Affairs. So today we're going to introduce to you Mr. Nicholas Bertucci. He is a long, has a long family tradition of military members in his family. His father served in Vietnam in the Navy. Grandfather served in World War II in the Navy and great-grandfather served in World War I in the Army. Nicholas joined the Navy in 2007 with a desire to continue his family's tradition and care for others. He signed up to be a Fleet Marine Force Corpsman and operate alongside and care for the United States Marines. Upon completion of his basic training, he was assigned to the 1st Marine Division Light Armored Reconnaissance Battalion at Camp Pendleton. From there, he deployed with his unit to two different conflicts. He served in Iraq in 2008 through 2009, operating in the field as a line corpsman. He was appointed as senior line corpsman of his unit and led several corpsmen under his command. Upon completion of specialized mountain warfare medicine training, he deployed to Afghanistan in 2010, leading his corpsmen and caring for his Marines through rigorous combat operations. Nicholas has completed three college degrees two of which while on active duty and one shortly after separating. He has completed an associate's bachelor's and master's degree. His care for his fellow service members never ended. He would ensure they were in good health and well-being for years to come long after the combat operations have ended. Nicholas's desire to care for service members continues as he has become the newest district veteran service officer for the Arkansas Department of Veteran Affairs. He represents District 5 and District 7 in efforts to serve the veterans of his state. Would you please make welcome to the stage, Mr. Nicholas Bertucci. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is a great honor and privilege to be here. You know, this entire time I've been having a hard time not crying. I am so humbled and honored with the display and joy that fills my heart seeing all of you people come out here and honor the veterans. 
My name's Nicholas Bertucci. I'm not from here. Don't hold it against me, but I'm from New York. Upstate New York. I'm gonna take this and walk around. So I was born and raised in New York, and uh, I'm from the woods, I'm from the mountain valley, and uh, coming to Arkansas, it's pretty much identical. I love the woods, I love nature, I love wildlife, but I love helping others. I love what I did in the military. I love what people have done for this great nation. And so the reason I'm still alive today is because the love that I want to give back to the people who have served. Once moving here in 2019, I was lucky and blessed enough to land an amazing career working for the Arkansas Department of Veterans Affairs. I manage 18 counties from Clay County all the way down to Phillips County on the right-hand state. Under me, I have county veteran service officers who work on the front lines in the offices to help the veterans of their communities. Accompanying me today is one of my county veteran service officers. She is your county veteran service officer, Charlotte Gunn. Our job is to help veterans and their beneficiaries get their benefits claims submitted to the VA. Our job is to compile legal medical documentation for veterans on issues that have occurred while in service and that are bothering them today. Submit that claim for benefits, whether it be monetary, education, loans, spouse. It's very important for veterans to seek help. They've earned it. Our job is to make sure that you have a better life, that you're compensated for the things that are bothering you today, whether it be physical or mental. A lot of people feel they don't deserve it, but you do. You raised your hand and you're willing to give your life for the sake of this nation's freedom. So allow us to help you. Allow us to help you cope. Allow us to help you file this grueling paperwork. It's very confusing. I really, really enjoy what I do. You know that feeling that you get when you have goosebumps running through your entire body and you feel like you're about to cry when you hear an amazing song or the national anthem or these wonderful, these wonderful kids making these beautiful displays for us to honor us. That's the feeling that I get every time a veteran comes to me and says, thank you so much, you've changed my life, my family, we can live a little easier now. We, we're not struggling, I'm not at risk of becoming homeless, I'm able to get health care. Those are the feelings that I get when I help people. And that's why I do it. Among doing that job, I wear other hats. Um, so you guys know my background, served in the Navy, and uh, also served in the Marine Corps. I love my Marines, uh, First Light Armored Recon Battalion out of Camp Pendleton, California, Iraq and Afghanistan, front lines of war. When I went to Iraq, a lot of people asked me, hey, Nikki, hey, are you okay? What happened over there? What did you see? What can we do to help you or make things more comfortable? And you know, I, I just, I didn't want to talk about it. I'm fine, I'm good, everything's okay, you know? And then Afghanistan, things got worse. But while I was in Afghanistan, I started a medical log for my Marines in a pamphlet. And that pamphlet turned into therapeutic writing. As the deployment went on, I wrote more and more detail about what happened every day. And it turned into four front to back page thick pamphlets that when I came home, of course, hey, Nikki, are you okay? What happened over there? So I'd hand over these books. Here, read this, I don't wanna talk about it. I'm okay though, I'm good. They'd hand the book back to me several days later and say, oh my God, you need to write a book. You need to write a book, you need to let the world know. And so 
my role is if someone tells you, if one person or maybe two people in your life tell you that you need to write a book, you should probably write a book. It's that simple. So I did. It took 11 years. A lot of tears, a lot of nightmares, um, a lot of hardship, panic attacks, anxiety, struggles with communicating with people or my feelings or just living life. But I faced the demons for months and months and months, stayed up late in order to get the book out to people. I finally finished it, and this year I'm celebrating my one-year anniversary of its publishing. The book is called Rolling Through Afghanistan, Enduring PTSD, Life as a Combat Medic. This book will make you feel so proud to be an American. It'll bring you through my deployment every single day. It'll bring you through what led me up to joining the Navy and what it was like going through boot camp and training with the Marines and preparing for these deployments. It'll also talk about after the military and what I went through mentally, physically. It'll make you laugh, because working with the Marines, you know, they're quite the characters. It'll make you sad, it'll scare you, it'll make you feel so proud to be an American, to know that we have the capability of protecting our freedom that we have the greatest firepower in the world. Most importantly, the book will encourage you to do great things, not only for yourself, but for your loved ones, those who have been in the military. If you've been in the military, it may bring up some hard memories, but it'll also encourage you to continue with life and be the best person that you can be. The message of that book tells about how I was at rock bottom and I was I almost seen the end. But something happened to me, and it encouraged me to stay alive and help other people. And I encourage you, if you know someone or have been in the military or want to better understand how to help people that come back from war who endure PTSD or any other types of pains from the military, read this book. It will help you understand how to help them. It will help you understand what they're going through and the proceeds go towards helping veterans and their families. After this event today, I will be outside in the main lobby and I'll be at a table. I brought 40 copies. I know there's more than 40 people in here, so don't bum rush me all at once. I'll be more than happy to sign the book for you and get to know you on a personal level and give you my information in case you ever need anything at all. Another hat that I've worn that I still wear is I like to stay busy. I like to exercise my demons, is what they say. Keep them at bay. I started my own business. I enjoy the great outdoors. I have a master's degree in environmental policy, fisheries, and wildlife management. I enjoy giving people solitude, peace, serenity. So I have property in Williford. It's about an hour west of here. And I took that property, and I decided to exercise my creativity and I've created a paradise for people to come enjoy hunting, fishing, swimming at the lake, relaxing at the beach, shooting at the gun range. If they want to go after some razorbacks, they can go after some razorbacks, deer, turkey, ATV riding, hiking, kayaking, or just peace and quiet away from everyone, surrounded by a thousand acres of forest and no noise of the hustle and bustle. The place is called Bertucci's Country Cabin, and our slogan is Paradise in the Woods. And I'll be sure to exchange that information with you, too, if you ever would like to come out or if you know a veteran that you'd like to honor and give them a trip of a lifetime. And we'll take great care of them. That soon became the Ozark Gateway and Tourism of Arkansas, one of the most sought-out destinations in northeast Arkansas. And I have people come from nationwide that just want to relax and get away. I'm going to leave you with this. For all the young folks here, the key to success is not about how much money you make or where you end up in life. The key to success is surrounding yourself 
with those who are successful before you. Let people who are successful and educated and kind and good encourage and enlighten you. Learn everything that you can from them because then you will become that. You will find your happiness in things that you love to do and that's your success. For those who have served, thank you so much for your service. Thank you so much for the sacrifice. Thank your families for putting up with all the things that you've endured while serving in the military and thereafter. Please, if you need help, if you need assistance of any kind, if you need to fight the VA on something, if you have questions about something, seek a veteran service officer. We exist to help you. We exist so that you can have a better life. I want to thank Green County Tech for having me out here tonight. I thank you so much for your service, for your support, for honoring us. May God bless every single one of you. Thank you so very much. It's an honor for me to get to introduce these guys. I have another one here for you, a very special guest of ours. I would like to tell you a little bit about him. Mr. Joe Bateman is a 2005 alum of Greene County Tech and a nine and a half year veteran of the Arkansas Army National Guard. During that time, he saw two combat deployments, one in Iraq and one in Afghanistan. In addition to his service to our great nation, he is also a local favorite and talented performer with a great personality and a style all his own. Father of Carter, Carson, and Cash Bateman, all GCT students, his green and gold roots run deeply. Please make welcome to the stage doing an original song, Mr. Joe Bateman. There we go. When I got to rehearsal yesterday, we did two songs, and uh, they were reversed, so I guess they, they flipped the script on me. But Yeah, I wrote this song in Iraq back in 2007. Uh, it was right before we came home, and um, there's a, a couple folks in here that was there, and uh, it's kind of give you an idea of what was going on in my head, for one, and um, I'm sure a lot of you veterans in here can relate to this song. I'm going to take my hat off for it, and uh, this is called Over Here. Hope you all enjoy it. God bless our troops. There's so many things that I've been through that you could never understand. The events of war and being over here What it's done to this man I've been away too long But now I'm coming home And to be totally honest, I'm scared over here you can't just act like nothing's wrong we put faith in buddies like we put faith in God we're coming home to loved ones that can never see the sacrifices and things that we've been through fighting for our country 
tree Over here I'm used to staying on my toes Living on the edge I gotta fight and try to stay alive At times with no rest home is not the same it's like a forgotten game I have to get used to it all over again cause over here you can't just act like nothing's wrong we put faith in buddies like we put faith in God we're coming home to loved ones that Sacrifices and things that we've been through Fighting for our country Let's not forget the ones we fight and die to keep free Our families have sacrificed the most While we're fighting for our country Thank you very much. Are y'all ready? Y'all may welcome the GCT Chamber Singers, huh? They're coming in from both sides. Everybody good? Just trying to be a father Raising daughter and a son Be a lover to their mother Everything to everyone Up and that on bright and early I'm all in business in my suit I'm dressed up for success From my head down to my boots I don't do it for the money There's bills that I can't pay I don't do it for the glory I just do it anyway Providing for our future My responsibility I'm real good under pressure being all that I can be I can't call in sick on Mondays When the weekend's been too strong Just work straight through the holidays Sometimes all night long You can bet that I stand ready When the wolf growls at the door I'm solid, I'm steady I'm true down to the core and I will always do my duty No matter what the price I've counted up the cost I know the sacrifice Oh, and I don't want to die for you But if dying's asking me I'll bear that cross with honor Cause freedom don't come free I'm an I will proudly take a stand When liberty's in jeopardy I will always do what's right I'm out here on the front line Sleep in peace tonight American soldier I'm an American soldier I 
I will proudly take a stand When liberty's in jeopardy I will always do what's right I'm out here on the front line The GCT Chamber Singers, huh? What a spectacular performance. If you enjoyed that, give another big clap round of applause. It's time for the Hall of Fame portion of our program, and each year, Greene County Tech solicits submission of Greene County veterans for the Veterans Hall of Fame. It's always a difficult decision for the committee to choose each year's inductees. Please welcome Mrs. Sullivan to the stage for the presentation of this year's inductees into the Greene County Tech Veterans Hall of Fame. Good morning, everyone. I have a loud voice, so bear with me, um, as my students well know. Um, I have been connected in some shape, form, or fashion with uh, our military for many, many years. My dad was in the Navy during World War II. Um, I had three uncles who served in the Army during World War II, one uh, received the Purple Heart and was missing in action for a while after the invasion of Normandy. Uh, had a brother who was in the Air Force. So I feel such deep respect and reverence for our veterans and for their families, past and present. It's just so much of a privilege to be able to honor them. And I am so proud of our school. I'm proud to be a graduate. I'm, I'm proud to be an employee. I'm glad that my children graduated from here because of the work that Greene County Tech High School does in honoring our veterans. Long before any other school did so, we were there trying to show our gratitude and our love for our veterans those who came home and those who didn't. I have um, been one of those students who um, was able to read their essay at Veterans Day back in the 19... Um, and I have been a teacher here for 41 years. And I have always done the Hall of Fame and hopefully I will be able to continue to do that because our veterans mean everything, everything to us because we wouldn't be here without those veterans. We wouldn't be standing here. I don't know about TikTok or Snapchat or any of those other things because I can barely get on Facebook. So I don't know about that. I do know that we wouldn't be able to make the choices that, to live our lives the way that we do. And we choose to honor our veterans, and I do 
please urge you, if you have a neighbor, a friend, um, a relative, whoever, please consider nominating them because even if you nominate, we still keep their names and we still, we want, an, we still consider them and we want to honor as many as we can. We want to see them get the respect that they so richly deserved. So today, I stand before you ready to announce. See, this is technology and this is too much for me. All right. Ready to announce um, our inductees this year. Our first inductee served in the United States Army for 18 months during the Vietnam War. He was awarded several medals for his service, such as the Vietnam Service Medal with three bronze stars, the bronze star with a V device and two oak clusters, the Army Commendation Medal with two oak leaf clusters, a sharpshooter medal, the combat gallantry badge with palm, and the silver star. And there were other, many others as well. He was a light weapons infantryman during the war, and, and that is the Vietnam War. He achieved the rank of sergeant. And from my conversation with our veteran, he was wounded in battle, but due to the circumstances of the war at the time, um, he never received the Purple Heart that he deserved. And I want to acknowledge that today for him. Um, I would like to read from his awards for his Bronze Star as well as his Silver Star. The first is for his first Oak Leaf Cluster, um, and it says, Specialist for United States Army, who through his unswerving effort and professional ability obtained outstanding results despite the adverse conditions um, incident to a combat environment. During the period December 1st, 1968 to February 1st, 1969, with a sense of urgency to complete the mission, he set an example that inspired his associates to strive for maximum performance. His outstanding, his outstanding actions materially contributed to the efforts of the United States in its counterinsurgency role in the Republic of Vietnam. His praiseworthy achievement and dedicated initiative were in keeping with the highest traditions of his military service and reflect great credit upon himself, the 9th Infantry Division, and the United States Army. And for his Silver Star, for gallantry in action involving close combat with an armed hostile force in the Republic of Vietnam. He distinguished himself by exceptionally valorous actions on the 22nd of May, 1969, while serving as a squad leader with Company C, 4th Battalion, 39th Infantry, 9th Infantry Division, on a blocking force mission in, okay, Jiao Duc District. I know I messed that up. All right, Sergeant, Mar uh, Sergeant, <clears throat> almost. Um, platoon was concealed in a good blocking position when they suddenly heard noises in the, in the heavy underbrush ahead. He climbed to the highest area available to observe the movement to the front, and almost immediately, the firefight broke out. Disregarding his own safety, he remained in his exposed position, directing the fire of his men. Though a much safer position was always available, he remained in place until the enemy was defeated. His extraordinary heroism in close combat is in keeping with the highest traditions of the military service and reflects great credit upon himself, the 9th Infantry Division, and the United States Army. After the war, our inductee became a human resource director. His hobby is playing golf. And after our program, you might ask him what his handicap is. Um, he has five children and 12 children. His wife is Candace. He was nominated by Christy Ramirez Sullinger, Carmen and Colby Stokes, and Ava Lincoln. Let us welcome to the stage Mr. Simon Ramirez.
I was drafted. Um, my basic training was in uh, Fort Knox, Kentucky, and I went to basic advanced training in uh, Fort Polk, Louisiana, old famous Tigerland, they called it. And from there, I was moved over, but I was drafted, and I never hesitated. I had never, my dad and my mom were there to watch me graduate from basic. And then from there, I, I went to Saigon, and I went, ended up with the 9th Infantry Division, and uh, the Mekong Delta. Being in the infantry, uh, I was a person that was, I didn't want to be a sergeant. All I want to do is serve my time, do the best that I could, stay alive. But I saw so many soldiers just didn't make it. Just, and I said to myself, thank you, Lord. Every morning I'd wake up and says, thank you for another day. I, fortunate enough to stay alive to receive three bronze stars. It's kind of, it's kind of ironic that with that one of the Bronze Stars, we were on ambush and we ambushed a sand pan. It was, uh, they traveled through the rivers, they carry mortars, they carry, I mean, and I, we ambushed the sand pan. We put up claymore, we, it detonated it right by it. We did not know that the sand pan was full of munition. So when it went boom, and then it went bloom rerouted the river, that's how big of an explosion it was. We were covered with mud and, and stuff, and um, had a piece of metal in my arm. Didn't even know I had it, because all we heard was just high-pitched noise. But uh, I looked back and I said, you know, somebody upstairs was watching over me for that to happen. So I was just so glad to get back home. The proudest one, and I never thought about it, is when I received the Silver Star for I thought it was very simple things of just, we were kind of pinned down and I decided, me and the other guy, come on, get you with the radio, come with me. So we swam underwater and he couldn't swim very much, but I, I drug him, I was a very good swimmer. I always had been since I was a kid. And we went underwater and came out on the other side and we could see everything from there. So um, I started kind of directing the activities of the helicopters and 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 uh, calling in uh, incoming fire to help us out because we were kind of we we thought we were going to try to block ten people twenty people and we were uh, there was twelve of us well it turned out to be that there's probably fifty or more oh. yeah yeah so there were a lot more than we were I, I've been to different countries and stuff, and I know what it is to see the land of the free. We're in it. For I wish people could see what I've seen so they could have a better understanding of what it is to be free. They always look at us, us Americans, as they envy us because we come from the land of the free. They get a job, get a car, I mean, do all these things, and an opportunity. With that land of the free comes opportunities. But nobody's going to give you nothing. You've got to earn it. A veteran, to me, is a person, male or female, that has been called to serve for their country. And they step forward and said, I'm here. I got America's back. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to award a plaque to Mr. Simon Ramirez for his service to our country. I'd also like to ask his family to come to the stage as well to be with him as we honor him too.
This is hard. I, uh, it's hard to look at that up there. I know a lot of you veterans out there, like me, that I would talk to other veterans, but I never would tell them I was a veteran. For years and years, I've done that. But I realize, because of my family, they need to know what us veterans went through. Excuse me. I just want to thank uh, Green County Tech for what they do and thank those veterans out there that are serving or have served that thank you so much. Those medals up there, I would trade them all in to get my brothers back. <laughs> I thank you so much, and I thank Green County Tech for what they do, and continue to do so, and uh, God bless America. And I did want to mention one thing that I was negligent in saying before, but I really want to say thank you to Lori Dial, Beverly Finley, Pam Andrews, who, who's students, and she worked on this video. They do such a good, good, wonderful job in honoring our vets, and I just want to say a special thank you from my heart to them. Our next inductee served for 34 years in the United States Marine Corps, the United States Army Reserves, and the Arkansas National Guard, all for a total of th 34 years. I just repeated. All right, he served in Vietnam from 1965 to 1966 and was awarded the Purple Heart, the National Defense Service Medal, the Vietnam Service Medal, the Armed Forces Reserve Medal, and the Army Reserve Achievement Medal, and many, many others. He reached the rank of Command Sergeant Major, and he served in such positions as an infantry squad leader, a first sergeant in ammunition supply, and a nuclear, biological, chemical command sergeant major. After the war, he worked in the U.S. Postal Service. Um, he is a past president of the VFW, and Vice President of the Veterans Support Association, a member of the American Legion and the Masonic Lodge, and his hobbies include watching baseball, especially the St. Louis Cardinals, and watching old westerns, okay? His story is in the November Premier Magazine. I urge you to pick up a copy and read his entire story, but there are a few things that I would like to Quote from, quote from that story. Um, our inductee said, I didn't even have a clue where Vietnam was. We stopped in the Philippines before. Uh, we got there and we didn't know what we were getting. Um, they wouldn't tell us anything. One of the first things that he heard was Hanoi Hannah. 
who, who came across the airwaves. Um, she was known for propaganda broadcasts during the Vietnam War, and she would read such things as the names of Americans who were recently killed or imprisoned, and she was trying to incite intimidation, fear, and encourage Americans to desert their, po their post. So he hears that um, as he is going over to Vietnam, and she said and one thing that stuck with him was that if you'll look to your left, the man next to you won't be going home with you. And he, she told them where they were going, um, and his battalion commander said he didn't know how she knew the things she said, but yes, there was a great likelihood that the person next to you wouldn't come home. He served in Operation Double Eagle, 29 days in the field, wearing battle fatigues, which were thin, lightweight, and we walked constantly through water, and they literally just rotted off. Um, he said, I remember thinking it was a beautiful country if people hadn't been trying to kill me. Um, and he said, from... Day one, we hardly ever went without getting fired on. Uh, when I got the Purple Heart, it was because mortar fire got me in the knee. Uh, it was Operation Texas, and we were taking heavy fire, and one of our helicopters came in, and almost, almost all the heavy stuff on it and in it got shot down with the machine guns in it, on it. Um, we set up a perimeter, and we came battling out, but all our support was on that helicopter. So we had a lot of men, a lot of people that we lost that day. One guy never saw his baby. I remember half-brothers that were with us. One died running, or I'm sorry, one died manning the machine gun, and then his half-brother took over and he was killed on that same machine gun. After Operation Texas, there were only 12 of us left, although we'd started out with around 20. Makes you think a lot, makes you pray a lot. There's no doubt about finding God out in those fields. After um, our inductee came home, um, he has a form of cancer that uh, is very likely related to Agent Orange, which was used in the war to defoliate the jungle. Um, and he has dedicated time to trying to help fellow veterans and to try to be there for them and to counsel them. He said, death, you try to prepare for it, been in war, you just do what you've got to do. I've always been a patriot. I love my country. I still love my country. But I'm thankful to be alive today. He's married. His wife is named Mary. He has two children, five grandchildren, and six great-grandchildren. And he was nominated by Tina Foster, but he is not feeling well today, and his son will accept the award for him. I would like to announce our next inductee, Don Foster, and his son David will be accepting the award for him. I went in and I joined 1963. Uh, went to uh, Vietnam in 1965, came back in 66, thank goodness. When they first told us, you know, our, our little group said, you know, you're going to Vietnam, I didn't have a clue where Vietnam was. You know, I never looked it up online and said, this is Vietnam right here. Didn't have a clue. 
Uh, as a matter of fact, when we got to Vietnam, off the, and we went over you know, on ship, went to Okinawa, trained up, and then went to Vietnam, Hanoi Hanna welcomed us to Vietnam, our unit. We didn't, we didn't know, like I said, we didn't know where we was going, but she told us that we was in the, the, in the coastal area of Vietnam by, the, by Chulai. Uh, look around because most of us wouldn't be going home. Uh, told us what unit we was with, what our objective was for, for landing there. And when she went off the air, the ship's captain turned it over to our colonel who was in charge. He said everything she told us was true except the part about us not going home. Uh, but he was wrong. She was closer to being right. I don't know how many operations over there. Uh, some of the worst things, would, of course, would be seeing some of your fellow Marines getting killed, uh, helicopters shot down, and there was there was some there was some bad things. Uh, now uh, you try to tell me if there were some good things. You know, I probably was, you know. But when you're over there and every day you go out, you're not sure if you're coming back. We, we had uh, one operation. We had 12, 12 of our platoon that came back. So, uh, you know, lost a lot of good friends, a lot of, a lot of good Marines passed away over there uh, because of what it was, it's a war, you know. There's no such thing as a good war. We didn't have the communication that we have now. I, I, talk, I was able to talk to my wife one time. That's the only time I got to talk to her, you know, that one time. Uh, we, got to, we, we got to write uh, cards on the top of a sea ration, you know, the tear the top, top off a sea ration, write a, on there and, and write free up in the corner, and they should get those. Probably, probably my highest medal is Purple Heart. And we went out that day and came back and set in a perimeter that night and then they hit us with mortars and, uh, you know, he never knew when, when they was going to do it, so. Got, a, got some shrapnel on my knee, got a little shrapnel here and I, thank goodness that was an old corpsman, he stuck one of them little wooden stobs with a, uh, Cotton ball on the end, some alcohol, put a band aid on it, we kept on going. Veteran to me is someone who puts the uniform, serves their country uh, in whatever capacity that they're told to do. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to honor Mr. Don Foster today. We also would like to ask his daughter, his granddaughter and grandson, please, to come to the stage to help accept this award. I'm just going to say First of all, it is an honor to be accepting this on behalf of Dad. And uh, he wanted, uh, he would love to have been here, but unfortunately he wasn't feeling well. But he did want me to convey his thanks to Greene County Tech, uh, to all the fellow veterans out there. But thanks to Tech for what you do each and every year. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the center of our stage. You may have noticed the table set before you. It is filled with symbolism. I will explain. This table is set for our prisoners of war and those missing in action from all wars. They're not with us today. Let us remember the United States Air Force, honored by Cadet Knoll. Let us remember the United States Army, honored by Cadet Carr. Let us remember the United States Navy, honored by Cadet Guardian.
Let us remember the United States Marine Corps, honored by Cadet Gonzalez. Let us remember the men and women prisoners of war from all branches of service that are too often forgotten. Let us remember them. The tablecloth is white, symbolizing the purity of their intentions to respond to their country's call to arms so that their children could remain free. Remember. The lone candle symbolizes the frailty of a prisoner alone trying to stand up against his oppressors. Remember. The black ribbon on the candle reminds us of those who will not be coming home. Remember. The single rose reminds us of the loved ones and families of our comrades in arms who keep the faith and await their return. Remember. A slice of lemon is on the bread plate to remind us of their bitter fate if we do not bring them home. Remember. There is salt on the plate, symbolic of the family's tears as they wait and remember. The glasses are inverted. They cannot toast with us tonight. Maybe tomorrow, if we remember. The red, white, and blue ribbon is tied to the flower vase by a yellow ribbon that was worn by thousands who awaited their return. Remember. The faded picture on the table is a reminder that they are missed very much and are remembered by their families. Remember. As we look upon this empty table, do not remember ghosts from the past. Remember our comrades. Remember those whom we depended on in battle. They depend on us to bring them home. Remember our friends. They are the ones we love, who love life and freedom 
as we do. They will remember what we do. Please honor and remember them. Dream of so 
Just one single glimpse of relief To make some sense of what you see With you I serve, with you I fall down Down Watch you breathe in, watch you breathe in Out What an amazing performance. Thank you again, Gracie. At this time, I would like to ask Mr. Bertucci to light our flame of freedom, which symbolizes the gift of sacrifice of every American soldier throughout history, including those currently serving at home and abroad. Please join us in reverent silence as representatives of our GCT student body carry a portion of the flame in honor of those who gave the ultimate sacrifice and service to our nation in each of the American conflicts. We carry the flame of freedom and honor the 250,000 who served and the 4,435 who died in the Revolutionary War for our freedom. We carry the flame of freedom and honor the 286,730 who served and the 2,260 who died in the War of 1812 for our freedom. We carry the flame of freedom and honor the 78,789 who served and the 13,283 who died in the Mexican-American War for our freedom. We carry the flame of freedom and honor the 3,600,000 who served on both sides of the Civil War and for the 498,000 who died for our freedom. We carry the flame of freedom and honor the 280,564 
who carry the flame of freedom and honor the 16,353,659 who served and the 470,316 who died and the 78,751 who are still listed as missing in action in World War II, all for our freedom. carry the flame of freedom and honor the 5,764,143 who served and for the 36,916 who died and the 8,177 who are still listed as missing in action in the Korean War, all for freedom. We carry the flame of freedom and honor the 8 million 752,000 who served, and the 58,193 who died, and the 2,413 still listed as missing in action in the Vietnam War, all for freedom. We carry the flame of freedom and honor the 467,939 who served, and the 299 who died in the Persian Gulf War, all for freedom. We carry the flame of freedom and honor the 1.6 million men and women who have served in Afghanistan and Iraq in enduring freedom. We honor the 5,583 who died during the September 11th attack and the 4,474 who have died in Iraq and the 2,126 who have died in Afghanistan, all for our freedom. From the early formative years, our nation was bought with blood and paid for and lives lost and forever changed. From the revolutionaries in 1776 to the war between the states, from the war to end all wars to the sands of an Iraqi desert and everything in between, we laid this wreath and cross of remembrance. And on behalf of the student body at Green County Tech, we accept and carry forth the flame of freedom from our generation to the next as the highest tribute we can give to you, our veterans.
I love Greene County Tech, and I'm always impressed with our high school. Always impressed with our students and all of the talent that they bring to the stage. I commend our high school students today in the audience for their reverent behavior, whether you were in the control room or backstage or uh, on stage. I thank our students for this 51st annual student-produced Veterans Day program. I thank the leadership of the high school and particularly thankful for Mrs. Webb and her assistants, Mrs. Finley, Mrs. Andrews, and particularly and especially thankful to Mrs. Lori Dial, our program director. What an amazing production today. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all for coming to our program today, and we want to invite all of our veterans and all of our guests to our auxiliary gym for lunch. We all have to eat lunch somewhere. Why not stay with us? We strongly encourage you to stay for lunch. As you exit the auditorium in a moment, you'll just veer off to the left corner back there. We'll feed you for free. It'll be a spectacular lunch and a good time for food and fellowship. So thank you all again for coming. This does conclude our program. And now our high school band and choir will perform Land of the Free.
thank you for your attendance today. Guests, at this time, you may go ahead and enter into our grand hall, to our practice gym for the lunch. And when Mr. Gare said it is fantastic, it is fantastic. Please stay and have a meal. Students, I need you to stay here for me. J-R-O-T-C students, as soon as our guests are out of the arena, I need you to go to, excuse me, out of, out of the auditorium, I need you to go to the arena for your group photo. You will sit in the home bleachers, the home side of the bleachers in the nice chair backs for your photo.